Welcome back to the final segment of today's program here on the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Rui Guo. We will continue our conversation with Dr. Huang Yenan, who is the president of Vitai Corporation in central Taiwan that specializes in WiMAX technology and services. Dr. Huang, we recently read reports yeah. in the media about, you know, I don't know if it's correct or incorrect, but, uh, you know, Intel is thinking of shutting down this WiMAX program office in Taiwan. Is it true? And what does it do to WiMAX technology in Taiwan? Yeah, I think that uh, we actually are partner with Intel. Okay. okay. So, so we work with Intel a lot. Okay, good. And um, when Intel closed its uh, WiMAX uh, program office in Taiwan, we will inform. Okay. But um, it's actually not a big deal because okay. uh, it's an re internal re uh, organization change. Okay. So well, whoever working with us is still working with us. All Whatever right. resources we have, uh, you still, have. Still, still have. So okay. we still have a council meeting with Intel. Okay. So I don't see any sort of back off of in Intel on WiMAX. So All they right. actually continue to invest on WiMAX. All they right. continue to make contribution to WiMAX standards. Okay. So I just don't see that uh, if sort of what it, whatever said on the newspaper say yes. Intel is withdrawal from WiMAX. That's not true. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, many many conversations with Intel. Okay. And um, I can feel Intel supporting uh, WiMAX as strong as before. Okay. So, and uh, as you know, you discussed earlier that you know, YMAX technology is very capital inten you know, intensive. intensive. And given the fact that you know, there you know, were newspaper reports about Intel you know, maybe pulling out of the YMAX you know, area, how difficult does it make for you to continue to attract investors who are interested in the development of YMAX technology? Okay. Um at this moment, we actually don't need any capital infusion, so okay. we don't need. Uh, we are not looking for capital, so it has no effect That's on good. us at this point. Okay. Um, but so I believe that the whatever we can attract investor will be based on our performance, like right. the number of customers required exactly. and then, uh, able to make profitability. Okay. So, so far I don't see any impact on us, but okay. it may have an impact on other operators. Maybe I don't oh, know. Really? Okay. okay. Because good. of general, actually we do have after news comes out. Yeah. We do have a lot of inquiry. People call and ask, especially a lot. Some of them are from bankers, investors, okay. and they just want to know, uh, like the question you ask, would it be, uh, you know, sort of a big blow yes. uh, to environment industries? And uh, uh, Intel has, has done a lot of news conference to, to say that yeah, yeah the internal, the situation. Yeah, internal yeah. organization changes, but the commitment to WiMAX has not never been reduced. Okay. Um, that's what I see so far. Okay. okay. So I don't see the effect, but the, the from the Psychology point of view, okay. uh, because people don't real, don't understand uh, what's going on, okay. they may be affected. All right. Okay. Um, for investors, they may be affected, but to us, so far we haven't seen any change. Any well, I think the impact may be only short term. On the long it should term, should be short term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we, if still as, positive. Yeah. If, as I said, when Korea is growing so well in terms yeah. of number of customers, and, yeah. and, and when a lot of operators are, are growing so well, mm -hmm. um, the, the definitely there definitely no will be indication. there. Yeah, women's will be there, no okay. matter what. Yeah. All right, let's broaden our perspectives again and talk about the digital gap in okay. Taiwan. Okay, how serious you know, is the situation? Uh, what can we do to try to you know, uh, bridge the gap in Taiwan and also globally? Yeah, so um, you know, a lot of time, the Taiwan is, um, is although it's small, yes. but there are many isolated areas. Yes. Okay, so a lot of times the difficulty is to put a wire, yeah. uh, go inside the mountain area mm. to provide good communications yes. or internet access. Mm. And that, that is a problem in the past. Yes. Okay. And uh, with WiMAX, what it helps is actually, I mentioned WiMAX speeds are very fast. Mm -hmm. and it's mobile. It's, um, it's basically, uh, you put up one base station, it can cover a lot of areas. Area. Right? Yes. So with WiMAX technologies, uh, I think it's very good to put, especially in the remote area, mm -hmm. when you don't have a, when it's difficult to put uh, wire infrastructures, Mm -hmm. It can much easier to reach every home by using WiMAX. Yes, and so that is definitely going to help a lot of of that. Now, in addition to infrastructure, I mentioned there's a lot of application can be developed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so application developed for because the WiMAX is not only for download no. of the um, download the data; it can upload data too. So the upload Good. means that to become interactive. So, okay. so for example, we were talking about. Um, especially like in Taichung City and County. Yes. Um, 
Telocity, because of this uh, competition in terms of en college entrance mm. or high school entrance, yes. so a lot of people, a lot of students has after school programs. Mm. But uh, in the remote area, they cannot afford a group teachers to go there to do after school programs. Okay. So they actually can use the technology mm -hmm. to be able to do remote learning, yes. to connect um, the people from remote villages. Yes. They can do a lot of remote mm -hmm. education through okay. this uh, network infrastructures. Okay. Okay. Can, can sort of help them to do a lot of education and learning. Okay. Uh, so I believe that um, YMAX, because of its uh, deployment is easier, uh, because the coverage is, is large Wider, and yes. faster, mm -hmm. uh, definitely it's a good te te tool and technology to be used for okay. bringing down the digital gap. Yeah. Okay. And with the emergence of the YMAX technology in Taiwan, Dr. Huang, if you have a crystal ball mm. in front of you today, how would you predict uh, the telecommunication market in Taiwan in about, say, five years from right. today? Well, um, okay, <laughs> I, I, would, I can do a lot of predictions and uh, they may op upset a lot of people. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, please. Um, things are changing. Technology usually is, we call it disruptive. Yes. Okay, when the technology is invented, it disrupts a lot of old business models. Mm, okay. okay. You look at incumbent telecom operators today, most mm. of their profit and the income coming from voice. Yes. Okay, and the mm. reason coming from voice is because First of all, uh, because of why voice is so expensive, especially on the, on the 3G network or mobile network, mm -hmm. because the equipment is expensive. Yes. The network, the, in terms of bandwidth, is not that much. No. So, so mm -hmm. it's limited, so they have to charge a lot for mm -hmm. per, per bytes or per data okay. sent. But because of the 4G networks, uh, make things change. means voice is just a tiny data on the network. All right. So the voice can be free, actually. Okay. The voice can be... Uh, very, very cheap. Okay. So similar to a fixed wire when voice over IP was mm. introduced in US. Yes. I, I remember uh, when I was working for AT&T, uh, the most profit in the past, in the, and many years ago, was coming from long distance call. Yes. Long distance call in, in, within the United States yes. and yes. international long distance call. They mm -hmm. gave AT&T a lot of profit. Yes. Now because of internet, because of voice over IP, those profit were gone. Mm -hmm. And you see AT&T was was eventually uh, merged by another company. Yes. Okay, so you can see the technology disrupt the business model and making the inter telecom industry completely change the landscape mm -hmm. and the change, you know, making the new players with whoever with a new technology become a domino player. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing will happen in Taiwan. You mm -hmm. will see that the new player with new technologies, mm -hmm. they can disrupt the profit, mo the, the business model, especially profit yes. of, the, of the incumbent Mm -hmm. uh, take up existing ones. So mm -hmm. the existing one has to change, mm -hmm. or they will be big, uh, become uh, absolute, absolute, yes. and, and become a uh, problem to survive. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, again, because of technology uh, is a disruptive technology, the technology can change the landscape. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope in in this change we become the yeah. the dominant player in the future. So. Yes, and Dr. Yeah. Huang, as a you know somebody who has been working in telecommunication field for over thirty years, right. what can you yeah. give us? You know, as regular customers, you know, some advice in terms of the coming of the digital economy, digital environment that we live in. Okay, it's actually very interesting for, like I say, when you have this 4G technology, the big network, you can see people like to be connected. Yes. And so in the past, people connected by the voice, but now connected by internet, like mm -hmm. Facebook. And uh, interesting to see that actually, I know my son more by looking at his Facebook site yes. than yes. talking to him. Yes. Okay, so, and that's how people change. Okay, so we found that people interact with each other through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. websites, through some web services. Exactly. Okay, and mm -hmm. so we have to get used to that. Mm -hmm. And as, as uh, you know, uh, because once you have network become available, once you're always connected, you know someone is, is communicating with you, not through a voice, no. but whatever you, you connect, communicate with people, they will leave a trace yes. on your website, on the Facebook, on somewhere, mm. and people will know what you're doing. Yes. And, and some people want that to happen. Yes. Some people want to connect to people. Some people mm. want people to know what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, where I am, mm. and so on. Okay. So it's a very different kind of life. And, yes. and, and indeed. Yeah, so, so as I said, you know, I, I know more about my sons on, on their Facebook, Facebook. Yes. than, than, um, than uh, talking, talking to, to them, to them yes. every day. So, uh, it's, it's interesting to see what's going to happen because okay. all these changes. Okay. And because of these changes, what can we prepare ourselves psychologically? Like you said, you know, maybe through Facebook today that people will know, 
every minute as to what you know, Dr. Yeah. Wu or Dr. Huang is doing. Right. But maybe this is not something you know, 20, 30 years ago that we you know, wanted people to know. Maybe we you know, value our privacy, right. our you know, personal space and all that. But of course, things are changing with the technology. Right, right. How can we then prepare ourselves you know, psychologically for the coming of the digital age? Yeah, um, psychologically, I, as I said, um, uh, we just, like I said, this sort of natural development of, of the world yes. and of the life. Yeah. So we just accept whatever's happening. Okay. Like, like I, haven't, I, I, I don't know much about myself until I, I look at uh, his Facebook, Facebook yes. and I see a lot of his friends, uh, yeah. what he's talking to his friends. Okay. And if you ask me to, I like that, I don't like that. I like oh. my son to tell me all his story exactly. to me uh, yes. you know, in person. But then there are a lot of things that happening, so I have to accept it. So psychology, we have to accept the technology. We have to sh think about how to use technology okay. and to communicate with our friends, mm -hmm. our younger generation, and, and so on. So okay. um, just, um, you know, something we have to, we have to accept it. You yes. know? So, so we don't need to prepare psychology like anything specially. We just know this is happening and okay. we have to accept it. And, okay. uh, um, and also technology is making it so uh, friendly to use it today. Yes. Uh, we actually don't need to learn a lot to accept no. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So technology will come to us, now we yeah. come to them. So. Yeah. Maybe in a few years, you know, using digital devices is going to be as easy as breathing in the air and drinking exactly. water. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Dr. Wang, thank you very much for being on the program today. We certainly learned a lot from you, from the conversation. I also want to wish you all the best in your professional and personal endeavors in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I want to thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. See you. Thank you.